we will be talking about function. So, uh, function is a block of organized and reusable code that can make your program more effective, easier to read, simple to manage, and uh, this to, to attain a very good um, best practice. We have to keep to this structure. Now, you can think function as a little self-contained program that can perform a specific task that you can use repeatedly in your code. One of the basic principles in good programming is do not repeat yourself. In other words, you should avoid having duplicated lines of code in your script. Functions are a good way to avoid such situations and they can save you a lot of time and effort as you don't need to tell the computer repeatedly what to do every time it does a common task. So that's, these are the advantages of writing a function. And we, we talk about anatomy of a function, that is uh, what actually constitutes a, a function. Now, to define a function, we will let's define our first function called sensuous to vary. So to do that, we simply write def, as you can see. Let me try to increase the from size. Okay. Now <clears throat> Then we give it a name, which is, let me copy this. I want to be lazy a bit. So, there, it, it needs a parameter. And the parameter is temperature. You can give it any name, but this is just a variable that parameter. Then, followed by this column. So, by the time you press enter, the compiler will automatically indent your your code to the next place like this. So now what you need now is to say return the formula for calculate for calculating essential to vary then multiply by let me give you a space for us to see very well temperature this equals to 32. So this is our function. So we can run it just for computer to recognize. So there's no error. We now have a function called census to var. So how can we call this function? So calling function. Using our new function, we can call this function to get a freezing point. So let me say freezing point with a variable, we call that function and attach it to this variable called freezing point. Uh, so, say sensuous. Now, when you want to call the function, you just call the name of that function, which is this. Then, you give it its parameter. Don't forget, the parameter is this temperature here, we now give it a value that represents the parameter. Now, in this case, it is zero. So we want to calculate a freezing point. So I can run this. Now, it has run. So I can say it should print my freezing point. Call the inbuilt function called print. So do this. Put this here, then say I can run it there. Now it, it gives me 32. This is invariant. So we have convert our freezing point from Celsius to Faro and it's 32. So these are the way we can call our function. Another way to call this function is 
you can specify and say, okay, but, and, uh, you can say, let me copy this. I say, let me say fishing point two. Uh, I can say temperature. I would call the name, the variable name, and say equals to 23. Let me see that. So I can print. Let me print the answer out so that we can see. I call the name of the variable, which is two. Then I will run it. So it's now 70, 73.4. So you see, these are the two differences. Either you input your parameter straight away, if it is just only one parameter. So if it is, or you call it in a positional parameter like this, by saying temperature equals to. So this is what we call a positional par parameter. So the reason uh, there are some use cases where you have to do this, especially when you have one more than one parameter in a function, because a function can take more than one parameter. So we see this a lot in our uh, programming. So we can do the same thing with boiling point in uh, uh, in the gradient shear. So I can say boiling point in the gradient shear. So that's boiling point, boiling point. So I don't mind my right uh, point equals to can say Celsius to vary which is that's which is hundred. Uh I can just say print print boiling point. So I will run it. So it give me two one one two. So now let's make another function. I will call that function Kevin to Celsius. So don't let us forget to write a function. You see divine and the name of that function, then the parameter that function we need. The parameter that function we need will be called temperature Kelvin. So you can put the parameter here. It's just only one parameter this uh, function needs. So to calculate that, uh, coming. Uh, sorry, I'm uh, making something. So. So I want to open one of the lecture notes. No, no. Sorry, I want to open one of my notebook. Lecture four. Okay, it's loading. Okay. So let me, I want to just copy the calculation here. So let's go back. Now, you can put it here. Now, I, I, I define another function called Kelvin to Celsius. Give it a parameter name, which is temperature to Kelvin. Then return the result, which is the parameter you give it to it minus 273.15. So that makes our second function. So we can call this second function and give it, and use it to calculate absolute zero. Now, let me use this, absolute zero, copy this equals to this, equals to, I can call this Kevin now to get my absolute zero. Just call the Kelvin and attach it to absolute zero variable parameter with the zero here. So I, I can run it. Then 
I can print it out. Print, print, uh, absolute zero to see what the answer is. Absolute zero, then run it. So it's minus 273.5. Because even if we will look at it, we enter zero here. So zero minus two, this is just minus 273. So that's how function works. Now, another thing we can do to check our understanding is creating another function called hello. So let me quickly do that, hello. And inside this hello, hello will be taking two parameters, two parameters. You know, the one we have been doing before is just one parameter. Uh, the, the first parameter is the name and the second parameter is the age. So now I just want to greet person, that person uh, by his name. So I want, just want to say, hello, my name is Da. I am 30 something years old. So let me do that. I will just say return. Then I will use, let me use a string formatting function like this. So in, inside this string formatting function, I will say hello, comma, my name is, is, then I will supply that variable, sorry, supply that variable, which is name. My name is, then the name of that person we comes in here. So we put that one here. There is this. I put full stop. I am uh, so, so, so years old, which is age. We put it in and put it here. Yes. There. Yes. Yes. Old. Old. So if we run this, that becomes a function. So which is running now. Now I can I can let me insert another cell so that I can call that uh hello. Now let me call that hello now. I will just say hello bracket my name, which is Bolani or Don't mind and age is maybe uh 23. Let's just try that, then print. So you see now the answer say hello, my name is Bolaniwa. I am 23 years old. So you see how I call that function now. So another way of doing that, let me use positional argument now. I will say hello bracket open. I now say name equals to, you see, Bolaniwa. Bolaniwa. Now, I can now say, comma, H equals to, oh yeah, 45. Now, you see, I will do something here now. If I, if I, uh play this you see is correct now i can try to exchange the position of my of my parameter and it will still work properly because it's a positional argument parameter i'm using you see it still work properly it doesn't uh mistakenly put name before uh, uh age so that is how it works now let's see function within a function. So we want to have a function within a function. And what we do with that is this. Let me copy this just to save our time. I will explain then. Let me put it here. Now I'm defining Kelvin to var a. Uh, we have temperature in 
Kelvin. So we have a variable called temperature Celsius and we call Kelvin to Celsius, which we have defined up here. If we can still remember, we've defined this here. So, and it's taking temperature Kelvin at is as its parameter here. So we have we have another variable called temperature variable, which is taking Celsius to variable, which is taking this temperature Celsius, which was calculated up there as its parameter. Then it's returning this variable, which it has calculated here. Now, this is a function calling another function. So we can have such situation, it is allowed. So if I run this, I'm not expected to have any error. So I can call this now. Let me look at a comment. Uh, let me call that function with this. Copy. So I want to call the function here. Let me cover this result. So absolute zero variable. So I just call that function here. This function defined up there. So let me see what the answer will be. So I can print that out. Print uh, say this. Copy this paste here uh, wrong. So I have minus power. Uh, minus 5.4 solution. So that is how to, what if I change it, temperature in Kelvin, maybe I change it to 23. Let me see what will be the answer. Uh, run this again. So I have minus 418. So now that is it. An introduction to script file. At times you may just have a script file that you want to put your code so up to this point we have been keeping our python code and markdown comments in a single jupyter notebook this is great but there are some cases like when you have long python code blocks or set of functions used in many notebooks in which you may want to have Python code in a separate document to make sure your Jupyter notebook is easy to read and use. An alternative to typing in all of the command you would like to run in the list then. So now, uh, a, a Python script file is simply a file containing a list of commands you would like to run. Normally, with one command per line and formatted in the same way as if you are to type there in Python script file. Traditionally used .py as the extension name. So the general concept of .py script file is, because a Python script file is simply a list of commands that you might otherwise type into Python cell in the Jupyter notebook or a Python console, we can quite easily create a basic script file and test it out. So that is what we'll be doing now. Inside this colon here, I can just right click and say new file. Come. Pass. Let me say new. test file or can come here let me just come here say new test file under file so the test file is not named yet so i want to name it let me go back to this i'm coming Let me cancel this one. Uh, 
something I want to kill you. Hello, sorry, I want to do just something also. Okay. Oh, why is it not responding? Okay. Oh, sorry, just respond now. I want to create a new file inside this folder. I don't know. You didn't want to give me a chance. But let me use this to do it. But I will rename this and call it rename. So we can give it... um. Let's go back to our function. So let me rename it as so temperature converter dot pan. I want it to correspond to our notes. So let me rename it as temperature converter. Rename. Select all. Control V. Enter. So you see now, when I rename this, the, this, the uh, Python logo immediately comes in. So because it's now renamed as .py. So computer recognize it as a Python script now. So we can use this to write our code. Now, we will be writing this code. Let me quickly go to where the code is. So uh, in our script file, we want to have these two codes here. Let me copy and paste here because of our time. So you see now, we have two, two functions, Kelvin to Celsius and Kelvin to Barrett. So these are the two functions that we can call from this script file. So now, how, do we call, how, how can we call this script file? So save it and loading the function we have done that so how can we call it uh, I, uh, I want to know the directory i am actually so that i can know how to call this uh function so i can use this ls which is list to get my directory so and the directory which i am now i have function in it I have title.txt. Oh, I didn't even know that it was created inside that. Let me see. Oh, I have many of them here. So let me delete some of it so I can ease my. I didn't know that they all later created. Coming. Delete. I just want to have only one of them. Delete. So, delete. So, I just only want to have this. Let me copy this to the place. Uh, yeah. Then, the name. This is temperature converter. Temperature converter. Let me rename it. Go back. Rename. Rename. 
So we have converter. Let me just name converter. Now, let me go back to my function. If I run this again, I should be able to see my converter as one of my uh, file. You see now, I now have converter.py. So I can import this into my uh, to my notebook. In case you don't see your file in your current directory, you can just use this command to change to the directory you your file is so that you can easily import it. Now, since we have confirmed that we are in the correct uh, directory now, we can import that script. So we just say, how do we import? Let's copy it. You can say, you can say from the converter, we will change this. Because we are no longer use this name. Let me just copy because I don't want to waste much time. Now you can see from converter, not temperature converter now, from converter, which is this file here. Import changes to vial. Let us not forget that we have changes to vial in it. So let me run that if there's any error. Oh. There's an error. Say from converter import. What is the error? Say import error. Okay. Let me see what where the mistake is. Uh, I don't have any mistake. Okay. Come. Cannot import names short from this. If you see, okay. let me let me rename that thing to be this because that name may be duplicating. Rename. Rename. Okay. Rename it to this dot pi. Okay, so temperature converter. So I want to use temperature converter now. Copy, paste here. So from temperature converter, import this. Let me run if there's any problem. Should be having, let me see. Wrong. Okay, I think this work now. So I think I have a spelling error before. So let me import what I intended to import for. This is this. Please. Let me run it. Yes, it's work. Now let's import our changes to variable also. Can do this by saying from from temperature converter copy temperature converter import import uh schedule to var dot this then we can run it. Okay, because there is nothing like schedule to vary in that file. It's supposed to be carrying to sessions. So let me go back. See, we should take note of all this type of error that is given us. So we have imported two things now. We import Kevin to vary and we import sessions to vary. So now we can now use all these to calculate our 
to calculate, we can use any of these imported function to to get uh to to we can use it by let me just add a cell here. Sorry. Let me add a cell up here. Add. Then let me call one of these functions like Kelvin to Celsius. Kelvin to Celsius. Bracket open. Kelvin, maybe I have 23 Kelvin. Let me see what the answer will be. So you give me minus. You see now, it's not working. So that's how to use scripts in function. So let's note, I can also import this way by saying, okay, from temperature convert, converter, converter, import, I can import all the function in that temperature converter. Um, I can import all the function there. I will first import Kelvin to Celsius. What Kelvin to Celsius, comma. Import the other function there, which is uh, Kelvin to Y. I just know that. There, if you run it, I don't expect any error. So, you see, that's for another way. Instead of importing it one by one, you can just import all the functions that you need there in that script. And that's all for all your program. Then you can use the imported function that you are imported. So, like now, let me get the variable, uh, pressing point, and say, uh, sorry, um, Kevin to change. Yes. Comma, Kevin to Celsius, and let me put three and run it. So you see minus two seventy points. So just, now that is it. Now another way of importing, you can oh. import and give it a, well, a, a nickname. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, we are logger. Log in again because it's like okay, we have to less than I think five minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. So uh, another way to import is we can use a, a nickname for our importing. Like if you see all what I've been importing now, many of them have a very long name. So like this, I can re import this. Just like this. As I will now put as KC. Let me run this. I will give it a nickname called KC. So anytime I need this function, I will just call KC just to shorten my uh, uh, right uh, too much typing. So I will just say KC in bracket. Maybe I give it minus twenty three. Let me run that. You see now? It's work. So that's another way to import. You give it a nickname. Anywhere you see as, you know that I want to give it a very short name. So let's know this very well because in our subsequent analysis, we'll be using it a lot. So <clears throat> you can play around with this advanced topic and uh, temperature calculator. I've explained some things there when you get the notes. So now, let me quickly go to module as we will be logged out very soon. Coding and using modules. Python modules refer to a piece of Python code that is designed to execute a specific task. Technically, Modules are simply Python script file with the file extension .py that contain function definition and other statements. So Python packages 
are a way of organizing modules into large entities. So modules are packages are similar to what are more generally called libraries in programming language, which again contain code related to specific tasks such as mathematical operations. So there are large number of Python modules packages and many of them greatly extend what can be done in a normal Python program. In fact, the abundance of free Python modules is one of the best reasons to learn and start using Python. So the word modules, package, and library are often used interchangeably. So let's note that. Loading modules, how do we load modules? Just like the function we just uh, talked about, we want to load an external modules or the third party modules, like that of mathematics, math modules. We can just say import. It's already installed. So you just call it import math. So by the time you run this, yes, it's run. So if you want to use like square root, which is a function inside math module, you can just say math dot to press space. You should be able to see, okay. Let me use this. So math dot maybe s q out. So square root of maybe 45. Let's run that. So or let me print it out so that you can see. Control S, say print. Okay, I think I'm having an issue here. My kernel has changed, so let me see. So let me rerun this. Then yeah, run and also, this. we don't seem to be seeing your, you just the screen, but we are not seeing your, what you are doing. We can only see loading and using module, module package yeah. and library. Oh. Maybe it's not streaming live. Yeah. Okay. But can you see this operation now? Math dot square root. No, no. Ah. Not seeing anything. Uh, let me let me reach. Let me stop sharing and start sharing. Oh. Can you see it now? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. What I've done now is just I've imported math module here. And to import, you just import math module. You know, math module is just an uh, external package which for someone to use it, you have to import it. So, and one of the way of importing it is this. So I imported it and I run it. It worked pro properly. Then I use one of the function in that math module, which is square root here. And I run it also. And it gives me 6.708 and so on. So this is how to import math module. Then in module, we have some already building functions that you don't need to import, you just use directly. One of them is print, print function. You just use it directly, you don't need to import them. So another thing is you can import a module and give it a name, just as what uh, we have done the other time in function. I can import math module and give it a nickname M. So that I will not be typing math all the time. I will just say math m dot s q s q r t which is the square root of four, and it will run. So let me run this first. Then let me run this. 
and they give me two, which is working fine. So all these things are just linking each other. Now, next week, we'll be talking about analysis. And one of the library we'll be using for uh, analysis in data science is pandas. So we can import, we, it's very common that we normally import pandas as PG. So we just say import pandas as PG. So we can run this. So anytime we now need pandas, we just call PD. So that's one of the way we import. Very, very easy. So another way of importing some module, at times some modules, we have modules in them. So that means they have sub module in the whole module. So example is matplotlab, where you can plot uh, your data. We'll be using this also a lot in our course. So you will see that in math plot lab, which is a module, I also have another module in it called PyPlot. So when you want to call a module inside a module, you just say, you call the name of that module, you now use dot, call that sub module inside that module, then you can say as PLT. So with this, let me run it. It's run. So I can now use this PLT to plot my data. I will just plot this series of data, which should give me this. Beautiful. So now that is how to use Matplotlib. Now, another way, if you want to know all the function in a module, there's a shortcut to that. So because we are at times we may not know all the function in a particular module. Like a math module now, if I want to know all the function in it, I will just use the function called DIR and put math there. Don't forget I've already called math up there. So I can play this out and it will tell me all the function. You see, we have all the functions that we have in math module. So let's do the same thing also for uh, uh, pandas. Let's see all the function we have in pandas. PD. You see, we have bulk of functions. See there, there are many in pandas. So we'll be using this thing a lot in our course. So uh, that's it. Now, another way of doing it is you can just press your tab key and you will see all the function. Let's do that. Now. Let me insert something here. Let me insert a new cell and say, you know, I've imported math as M dot. So I can press a tab key. Once you press a tab key, it will show you all the functions that are attached to math module. So these are all the functions we have. That's another way of getting all the functions we have. So another, let me use, do it also for pandas. There is a tab key. You see now, I have a lot of functions attached to it. As you can see, we have read, read Excel, read comma separated value, read clipboard board, plotting, pie fault. So we have all these functions attached to it. So let's take note of that. Now, at times, when we don't know what a function is doing, we can just make use of app function to know the function of that function that we are calling. Like, if we want to know what sign actually means, you can just press app dot math dot sign and it will tell us it will read bring out a message a, 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 a app documentation on that thing so you see how big the documentation is just talking about what sign s really means and it's telling us that the s there is measured in radian so that is it now at times, if someone is working on his own local system, 
you know, we have been using cloud computing server for our work. At times, you may want to install your Python on your local system, and you may need to install all these external package or modules. Most times, it is recommended to use Conda, which comes with an Anaconda and many Conda Python installer. So you can use that to install all the modules you need. But in this course, we will still keep to um, this our uh, cloud computing server for our work throughout this course. So later on, when we go to other applied uh, use cases, we may not talk of how to install it on our local system. Uh, so that's it for today. Thanks for listening.